a pastime passed on for generations. Wesley, there's another one right there beside me. Five years old, my mom taught me how to plant big plants. Once I learned how, that was it. You had to dig your own. And I'm 58 years old, so that's a long time. A way to feel connected Three, four, five. to the coastline. You just hit the ground a little bit, and the clam will, will react. He'll, he'll pull his head back down. Oh, there it is. If digging for razor clams is a Pacific Northwest art. Now, I'm not a professional at anything, but I'm an expert about everything. Making sure they're safe to eat is the corresponding science. Hey, good afternoon. I'm with Fish and Wildlife collecting interview data. Did you guys Biologist Bryce Blumenthal and other scientists dig for answers. All right, guys. All right, got me. Hey, I don't like this. Let's go. Right, you got some <laughs> On beaches like this one in Grayland, they take tally of clam populations. You got your 15 clam limit? Both of us did, yeah. And sample the species to check for toxins, which can grind the season to a halt. The toxin that shuts us down most often is demilic acid. Demilic acid causes amnesic shellfish poisoning. Uh, in, in severe cases, it causes death and permanent brain damage. And, you know, in mild cases, it's, it's uh, an upset stomach and, and, a, and a pretty bad time. The acid was first to blame for closing razor clam digs in the 90s. And last summer, pelicans along the California coast died from eating demoic acid tainted anchovies. More than 20 people got sick from poisoned shellfish. Couldn't, couldn't grasp anything and hold it. That's when a Washington Department of Health lab first discovered demoic acid in razor clams, and it caused the state to cancel the rest of the season. Here's how the acid is formed. Sunlight, warm temperatures, and shallow water make algae grow faster into large blooms. We see lots of types, many harmless, across the Northwest. But one type, called Pseudonicha, can produce the toxin demoic acid. Razor clams consume it, and while it doesn't kill them, it can cause sickness in people and animals who eat them. Lumenthal says when tests show unsafe levels, fish and wildlife has to issue closures. Both Washington and Oregon have been forced to do so near summertime or around marine heat waves, though at this point there isn't a clear trend line over time. That's like the big question mark. Is this our new normal or is this like closure every other year? That's not the work that we do. Um, we just kind of manage the fishery and we just um, roll with the punches as they come. But some researchers are looking into what the future could bring. A recent study examined how a marine heat wave sparked a new demoic acid hotspot on the West Coast, and more work is being done to unearth trends. In the meantime, scientists and local partners have developed early detection and warning systems to help gain a better understanding of exactly which areas are impacted so closures only happen when and where they have to. There's a lot of people who come out here and, and uh, stay in hotels and patron local businesses, and so it's a huge um, economic driver for, for coastal Washington. Fish and Wildlife publishes data about acid levels at Washington beaches, and so far, 2024 testing has not revealed dangerous outbreaks, but they'll keep checking. Ah, there you are. Just like local clam diggers do. Got it? There it is. As they take part in this time-honored tradition. For Environment Northwest, I'm Erica Zuko.